Hey guys, so in today's video we are going to continue to break down Ren's response in regards to the Mr. T Lexify and Ren situation. I've already uploaded two other videos, so if you want to check them out first and come back to these ones, please feel free to do so as they cover other aspects of the case. So the first bit I'd like to cover is regards to the letters that Lex sent to Ren. Um, for apologising for choking her and abusing her. Um, so she tries to suggest that he sent these letters that you can see on screen here. And it's quite interesting this because Lex thinks differently. So I'm going to show a clip from his response for this first bit and then we're going to discuss these letters because I'm a bit confused. However, the letters Reagan shows of mine are all typed and have been forged by her to further defame my image. She claims that my company name on the bottom of these letters was edited.tv, which is completely false. If you actually go to the website, the LLC name is Velvet Platform LLC and not edited.tv co. I also- So Lex basically claims these allegations regarding the letters are completely false because the name of the company is Velvet Platform LLC rather than edit.tv. But I'm not sure I follow this quiet and I'll explain why. So what I actually did is I actually decided to Google Velvet Platform LLC and I couldn't find any information that associates that particular business name with edit.tv anywhere on the internet. So I simply did this by Googling edit.tv and then followed by Velvet LLC and I'd assume that had come up so we'd have an understanding of what the company name was but I couldn't find anything so I was a bit like hmm what's going on here so what I did instead is I googled edit.tv because that's the name of the supposed uh, website stroke company that we're referring to here. Couldn't find that website either until I came across Lex's LinkedIn profile. So I was like, oh, this is fun. So I saw his LinkedIn profile. It doesn't have anything interesting on it, really. It just states he's got experience in things like Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. But it's got a link to the edit.tv website. So I thought, hmm, I'll click this, see what's going on. And then when you click it, it takes you to a completely different website. Now, I didn't really know about this website myself even existing to begin with. And I don't know whether it's been deleted or what, because from this, I get one of two things. I either think he's either, you know, the business just doesn't exist anymore. It's been shut down or never kicked off or the website's been deleted to prevent us from looking this up. Now, this is not me accusing Lex of anything or anything like that, saying he's suggesting that he made these letters, but it is a bit weird that I can't find any of this information that he's claimed on the video, so my head is a bit puzzled right now. Unless you guys can find it, because I generally don't know where to find it there, and that would be very helpful indeed. However, um, this video that Lex made was only made, what, a couple of weeks ago, this apology, maybe a month ago, something like that. So it's a bit weird that this company doesn't really exist anymore because I'm just, doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. I mean, why is it when I click a link, it takes me to a completely different website, though? It does make me wonder if that was even true. Like, it really does in terms of the company name. Again, I could be wrong. You guys might be able to find it, but it does really ring alarm bells for me. But if I was to take these letters at face value from what I can see, my head's just sitting there just like, well, they do look pretty fake. They don't look legitimate. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they just they just don't look legitimate in general. I mean, the, the way they're presented is a bit weird and you won't really put a company name at the bottom of a love letter or apology. Like if I'm apologising to someone and writing a letter, I'm just going to write the letter. I'm not going to start putting copyright, blah, blah, blah at the bottom. So to me, they have probably been fake in that regard but at the same time it does still doesn't excuse that regarding the whole company situation because my brain is baffled by that one but with regards to the letters it's um, not 100% confirmed but it does look likely that they could be forged. So Ren does respond to this in a video um, as you've probably already seen already by now but I'm not really going to go through that there's not really much point but in her response she claims that she was sent flowers on by what like by Lex along with one of the letters and also states that his company was set up in 2022 not 2021 because one of the letters are dated as 2021 but I can't prove this I can't say Ren's correct or anything like that because I don't know how to find information about this company um, you guys in the comments might have to help me out with that one <laughs> So in this next section, we're going to discuss the fact that Ren claims that Lex was harassing her mum um, and blackmailing them. So I'm going to play that clip for you now and then we're going to discuss. 
year, up until last month, Lex Adrian Iwan was harassing my own mother through text messages and trying to blackmail my mom into silencing her through me. Lex claimed that he finally cut me off with a cease and desist letter that he sent me, but he continued to harass my mother via text message to try and intimidate and silence me. In my second Google document, I show some text messages of Lex scaring my mother into silence. And in this specific text message, Lex tells my mom that the California law will not be in my favor of statutory rape because the crime has exceeded its expiration date. Lex says in his video that he kindly told my mother that his crime could not be taken as statutory rape because it was consensual. He says, it's not because I committed this crime that I was explaining to her. It's because I was clarifying about what she believed that happened Happened that did not occur. Yeah, anyways, some more. You know you were harassing my mother. You know that you sent her that message because you were trying to tell her that, hey, even if your daughter takes me to court, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna win. Lex was also harassing my mother about other people calling Lex out for talking to the 13-year-old girl, Alex. We already know that Lex has confirmed that he's already spoken to this 13-year-old girl and he is guilty about his interactions with her. But Lex had decided to bring my mother into the situation and demanded my mother to get me to stop harassment coming his way. When in reality, I had no contribution to anyone harassing Lex. I never sent anybody to harass Lex. I never sent Renzaru, I never sent anybody. The people that were harassing Lex on Alex's behalf didn't come from me. They didn't come from anybody. They came because they wanted their own answers. Lex was texting my mother and harassing her because he knew he was guilty and he knew that if any of the truth came out about Lex grooming me and raping me, that he would be fucked. Lex knew his last attempt at keeping things behind scenes was by harassing my own mother. At some point in his claims against my mom, Lex tries to frame his messages harassing my mother as his excuse for why he continued to give me money out of fear. This is completely false, and Lex was not giving me any money, nor was he paying my rent when he was threatening and blackmailing my mother. Lex's actions are incredibly disgusting, and it shows that Lex will go to extreme extents to keep his dirty secrets hidden. So she claims in this that um, Lex wasn't paying any rent or any bills at the time of these messages being sent because apparently that's what the blackmailing was about. He was saying that um, I won't, I'll, I'll stop paying everything, won't pay you this, won't pay you that, won't help you out if you keep threatening me. So basically he's saying they're threatening him um, and being with legal action and all the rest of it and he's blackmailing them with regards to money and stuff like that, saying that he's paying for everything, but she says that he wasn't. Um, but there's no evidence of him not paying anything. To me, in these messages, I think Lex is quite afraid of like any consequences that could come from these uh, potential actions that he's committed. Again, I'm not accusing him of these actions. And um, obviously, he's messaging the mum saying that Ren's doing this, Ren's doing that. And I wouldn't call it harassment. I'd say more he's just angry, frustrated and upset at the situation. And that's about it, really. Now, he does state in the messages that he sends the mum as well, before we move on to the next section, that the um, sex, quote unquote, was consensual. So it won't go down for rape. Um, but again, there's no evidence on either side to prove that it was or wasn't. I can't say if it is rape or isn't rape. I mean, this is just a bit of a rubbish argument, I'm afraid, by Ren. Um, because I genuinely think Lex is just sending messages out of thin. I wouldn't say he's being harassed in these messages from what I've seen. Again, you might, you guys might think differently, but um, I think it's more of a fear tactic. I think he's just panicked and scared of what the consequences could be. Even though he thinks he's in the right, saying that it's not rape or anything. Um, it's also, he's probably thinking in the back of his mind, what if it does turn out to be rape? What if um, the court believes her over him and things like that? I think he's just scared and I don't think he means to be an harassing person, in my personal view. So in this next section, we're going to address the allegation that Lex made against Ren in regards to her um, speaking and sexually um, dating uh, minors, up to five of them apparently. So this would be interesting to hear. So let's have a look at this. Minors. I'm incredibly disgusted that Lex went as far as lying about me having an inappropriate relationship relating to five minors. Lex claims that I was an adult having an inappropriate relationship with five minors, saying that I cheated on on him with five minors. As you all know, these false rape accusations that Lex has made against me have completely tarnished my reputation. Even though Lex didn't provide any proof of me with any minor, people still believed him. Even though Lex used photos of me with a girlfriend and a friend that I met in college, people still believed Lex when he said that I abused and hurt other minors. Lex knew what he was doing when he made up these twisted lies. He knew what he was doing when he manipulated those photos of me with my adult friends. Lex knew that because there are no photos of me with a minor out there, that he had to manipulate public posts of me with my adult 
adult friends in order for people to believe his false accusations. Lex claims in his video that he was anonymously told that I was cheating on him with five other underage boys in high school throughout the relationship, as he exactly words it. His proof that I was cheating on him with these five minors is a text from Anna, my ex-roommate, where she says that I cheated on him with five guys all together. Nowhere in Anna's message to Lex does she say that all of these men are minors or that they're in high school. Either way, Lex misinterprets the text message that Anna sent him and he is going out of his way to falsely frame me as a pedophile and groomer because Lex is that person. Lex going as far and lying about something very serious goes to show you how guilty Lex really fucking feels about the entire situation. How sick do you have to be to lie about me and say that I did stuff with minors? That is so untrue. That is so hurtful. I've had so many people tell me that I need to be in jail, that I need to do this, that I need to kill myself, that something needs to happen to me because of Lex's false allegations. Lex goes as far as saying that, she lured them into my place in Los Angeles to take promiscuous photos of her in exchange for sex, which is truly a disturbing claim to make. I've never exchanged anything with anyone for sex in my life, and to even make such a heinous claim about me with zero proof is insane. This is a time where proof is so important. These allegations that Lex is throwing at me are so important. It is so important to provide proof. Yet Lex is throwing these around willy linny and not providing any proof at all. Lex shows a couple of pictures of me with my adult friends, claiming that my own friends are the ones who I'm paying in sex. That is disgusting. That is crude. It is horrible to say that. Neither of my friends were lured into my apartment for sex. The fact that I have to say that out loud is crazy. None of my friends were paid to hang out with me in general. None of my friends were minors. The people who Lex is trying to use against me and trying to frame as minors are adults. These are adults with lives outside of Lex's drama. And Lex thinks that he can use my friends as pawns for evidence to manipulate people? It is so fucking disgusting of Lex to do that. To blast my own friends on such a big platform and then not blur their faces out the way Lex blurs his own friends' face out. If Lex really believed that they were minors, why didn't he blur out their faces the same way he did for his adult friends in his Thailand photo reference? Not only did Lex use two adult friends of mine to frame them as minors, Lex also uses a photo of me as a minor in high school with my friend who is also a minor. Lex is trying to use this photo and claim that I am having an inappropriate relationship with a minor when in the photo, I am a minor myself. Lex doubles down calling me a cheater, saying that I cheated on him with my high school classmate Marlo. This is the guy who is the minor in the photo. Again, it is so disturbing that Lex is using his name and bringing these people into Lex's own drama so that Lex can attempt to save his own ass. The evidence that Rem presents in this section is incredibly weak, and I mean very, very weak. It's not even evidence. It doesn't ship prove anything, in fact. Um, she just claims nothing happened and says that the photo of her and his, his friend, her, her and her friend together, um, was them being underage and just being friends. But we don't know that. We haven't got a clue. There's no evidence to suggest otherwise. You, you're not. You've not proved anything. You just said nothing happened, and that's not evidence to me. That's just wasting my time and wasting everyone else's time. You've not proved anything. You've just said that you were friends with this guy and that you were underage underage and blah 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 but you've shown text messages sure of you maybe being um, um, underage at the time or whatever but you didn't prove that nothing didn't happen you just said that nothing happened if that makes any sense i might be rambling on a bit here but the evidence is terrible also in this bit you may have screwed yourself over here a bit ren and i'm going to explain why so in this clip that i showed you literally said that here's a photo of him as a minor with you like lying next to him it doesn't look great when you say stuff like that it's um it's almost like you're kind of like admitting that he's underage it's not i'm not saying that you're admitting that you're not underage but you're it's it's a bit of a weird way of wording it you probably should have worded it a bit better um because you kind of um exploited yourself just a bit <laughs> like it's not a good idea Anyway, guys, I'm going to actually leave it there. Um, there is more to talk about in the final part of this. I was going to make this the final part, but I actually watched on ahead. And let's just say I've got a lot to say about that as well. And that'll be coming to you guys in a day or two time because 
I don't even know where to begin with the next video, to be honest with you. I'm still speechless from what I've just seen and what this girl says and what's going on. But overall, to be fair, like this stuff with Lex and Ren is like really messed up stuff uh, when you put, think about it. The accusations that are being flown around are very, very like criminal activities. Um, and the fact that this is even on YouTube and these two are like being labelled as these kinds of people is very, very concerning for the zombies community and even the YouTube community. When I see stories like this, um, obviously I'm just sitting there thinking, <laughs> these are meant to be YouTubers, we're meant to look up to these people and... It's very, very upsetting, very, very disturbing, and there's a reason this story exists, so something has happened by either one of them or even both of them, because I think at the moment, um, from what I've seen um, from both Lex and Ren, um, they there are there are, there are factors which I'm, you've not I've not shown you yet to suggest that they're both criminally responsible in some way, shape, or form. Um, again, we haven't got enough evidence for me to pr to prove that, but from what I've seen, it's like they're both they they've both got to um, appreciate the fact that they're both in the wrong in some way, shape, or form. But you will see that in the final part when I release it. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.